All right, Peter, your sister's the real deal, so I arranged for you to get some combat pointers from my old buddy, Steven Seagal. Uh, it, this, this fat guy? Yep. Go on, ask him anything. I, how did, uh, why, why are you so fat? Okay, ask him about anything but his weight. Uh, uh, you act Asian, you look Native American, your name is possibly Jewish. What are you? Hey, fat. Meet Nico. A covert agent trained to survive in Vietnam. Nico has a sixth degree black belt in Aikido. And family in the Mafia. Nico's a cop with a bad attitude. Do you know why I love you? You don't live the way other people live. You're officially suspended this time. The feds come in, the doors close, nobody hears, smells, or sees anything. One man. You just made number four on the most wanted list. One obsession. I want to be number one. One rule. You guys think you're above the law. You ain't above mine. Nico. Z1, let's go, boy! It has begun. Action Trump. Action Trump. <laughs> Action Trump. He is back. This time, he's not only the law. He's going to stop everything that tries to be above the law. Starring, starring, starring Donald Trump as Action Trump. <laughs> Actually, I, I like to call him Russian Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is because because because, because Steve Seagal is Vladimir Putin's version of Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we start, uh, I'm yes, gonna let Reckless take over and introduce him and his gang mm-hmm. for this podcast. So Yo. go ahead, sir. What the fuck is up, people? I am Reckless Fox from the Scar Game Podcast, and you guys probably remember me from the Glimmer Man for Action Trump last year. And right now, I got three fifths of my horsemen of the apocalypse. I got Broken Cabado, my token white boy, and I got Alec the Indicate, our very own Auntie Slayer. So if you're an auntie looking for some happy, happy nights, call my boy Alec the Indicate. There you go. But guys, we are the Show Game Podcast. We are here, and we are honored to be on Three Black Geeks Podcast. And I'm going to let them talk. So go ahead, talk on video and not Skype. Real quick, real, you know we have yeah, grown. Yeah, hey, yo, Allo, you want to say something? Oh, nigga? Bitch. <laughs> yeah, bitch. I was like, I was waiting for the webcam to come on. <laughs> no, wait. Oh, hold up, hold up. I, I was told to get on that for it, right? And I saw I was watching the movie in the meantime. This shit didn't start till like an hour and thirty minutes later. Who <laughs> <laughs> done that shit? <laughs> That's how that's 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 what we like to call CP time, sir. You have to get your stuff. Yo, uh, oh, I, I would have loved to know that. Hey Fox, uh, What's your up? boy like your boy who happens to be the auntie slayer. Um you can I mean I just need to introduce myself like a homeboy <laughs> from Full Metal Alchemist. We are respecting each other with that, like with the flexing muscles handshake. Also, it looks like you're in a radio station, so I respect that setup, sir. I'm thinking you like you got your own radio station set up here or what? Because that looks pretty professional. I don't know how, why it just looks that way a little bit. I feel like there's I feel like there's shade coming somewhere. I don't know. No, 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 no. I, that's yet. not shade. <laughs> that looks like yet. that looks very. It looks like very professional. I'm just like you got all the pictures up there. Like it's a radio station. Like this is actually pretty good. I was like I, I feel jealous a little bit because I need. Hey, hey, hello. That means whip your dick out right now. So this mo- <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, I would get in the podcast one time though, do I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. YouTube would be, be like, oh nudity, 
Get this fucking damn channel out of here. <laughs> no, 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 here's, and also YouTube. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. They ain't use a song yet. <laughs> Dude, every ever since the advent of uh the content ID system, YouTube, every time we put a song up, they're like, ho ho there, buddy. I like it. Where you know? I like it because the the the, the 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 copyright thing will go off. I'm like, who used this song? You click on it, it's just some dude rapping. I'm like, this is not even your song. How do you have a copyright thing on this? Hey, I knew the I knew the I knew the Gucci guy. I knew the I knew the day the Gucci came. I knew the day the Gucci came when I streamed Lego Star Wars and Disney came for our ass. I was like, oh shit! All right, yeah, you know, I, I love, love it. That shit. I love. I uploaded my tweets of. Of the game Memory of Heroes onto my YouTube, and and then uh, the Toy music came for that ass. Like they they they, they, they cited a fifty five second clip of the gameplay footage saying, "Oh, you can't monetize this video because of these fifty five seconds." And I look at those fifty five seconds. I'm like, "What's even happening here? here? All we see is the main character walking through a desert. It's not even a cutscene." That's because that's no- Toei coming for that ass, Commodore. Yeah, that's I what. love it. I love the day that Toho came for us because <sighs> this is the day that me and Eris knew that you can't just put up Godzilla crap because we did something where <laughs> we were riffing. We was riffing on Godzilla versus King Kong. Very, very funny stuff. We'll never see the light of day. Why? Because YouTube, I mean, lightning speed before this was even a thing showed up like, yeah, so Toho said, uh, run them their money. Oh, you ain't got it. Take the shit down now. Now, now, your, your oh, page oh, comes it was, down it with was it. The, uh, it was so, the Godzilla dive kick that Ares put up, and I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so, essentially, so essentially, it was a virtual judgment cut right before it even freaking uh, hit YouTube, huh? It was great. Yes, it was. Speaking yes, of judgment cut. Like, you, you know, I remember like, the yeah, good old days. Yeah, on the level, oh, oh. I'm sorry, I was going to say, but yet on the level on some dumb shit, that gets axed. But our King of Fighters riff is still alive to this day. <laughs> We're monetizing still alive, that shit. Never got still alive. We monetize it. I am waiting for the day. Who even owns that movie? <laughs> That's because you have the entire country, uh, the entire Central Amer- American government uh, siding with you guys. Because King of Fighters, we all know. Mexico loves King of Fighters. Just saying. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> true. Apparently, the Mexican government owns that fucking movie because they don't care. They're like, all right, whatever. Cartels like let it go. That's why I they had- remember the good old days of YouTube, where the only reason I even found out YouTube existed was because I found out that Full Metal Alchemist had a movie, and I had to find a way to watch it. And they're like, hey, have you heard of this? Uh, on YouTube? Remember those 2000, days? Two thousand five like, YouTube, when you could watch all of Daft Punk's Interstellar five 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 all I've along. Watched- I wa- okay, my first season of Super Sentai, Bokinger, I've watched the entirety of it on YouTube. Toho did not give a fuck. I will never forget the day I sat and like binge like almost all of John Claude Van Damme's movies all on YouTube, oh. all in stellar 400p? 40p. I don't know. 480p? 480p. No, 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 no. Never, 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 never. This is the first high, version. High quality. High quality. Uh, speaking of which, um, so Boy, above the law. That was a fun time, wasn't it? <laughs> the Wild Wild West, like Steven Seagal's first movie, Above the Law. Yes, this is Steven Seagal's very first movie where, number one, um, yeah, clearly this is when Steven Seagal had, was in shape. You know, and he was yeah, clearly this is what on top I, of his game. Yeah, yeah. this movie is yeah. what I call this is what I call Action Trump's version of Art of the Deal. Remember, in Art of the Deal, that's when everybody believed the bullshit of <laughs> Donald Trump. In this movie, you kind of believe some of this crap of him. Some the of it, I say all of it, and I say all of it. The keto, for the most part, for the most part, you know what kills it? The second this dude starts speaking Japanese, I feel like this Japanese that he used in this movie was like so pointless. Like I just like, like, Eris, you 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 lived in the country, sir. You lived in the country, Eris. Was he speaking actual Japanese, or was it like white man Japanese? Well, it wasn't. Hmm. In the words of uh, Glenn Quagmire, he was not using phonetically uh, used Japanese. Ah. But, 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 however, I'm not going to give him too much credit. I will say a part of it was slightly 80-yard Japanese. Oh, hey. ah. 
<laughs> Thank you. Man. I could be wrong, but the way he was using, it, I'm like, yeah, th- there are times when I'm like randomly walking around, like walking around like different uh, different parts of Tokyo, and I would hear Japanese uh, being expressed, like just from just from conversations, and it literally just sounds like Bleh, all in one <laughs> shot. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's like I'll pick up on one word, and I'm like, I. I think I heard the word donut, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I could something, be very something, wrong. Something, it's like something, something, something donut. <laughs> something, like, something, something donut. Something, something, something cream filled. <laughs> something, something complete. It's like, I love man, the complete part. I don't know why. That was, no, literally, you know that was literally me and my brother. We heard like my brother is way better at me in Spanish than I am, and I took more Spanish classes than him. Go figure. But like we heard them speaking, and I was like, I hear some of it. And he's like, Yeah, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about they need to go out to Home Depot and get blah blah blah. And at first, I thought he was just fucking with me because he mentioned Home Depot. And he's like, No, they actually are going to Home Depot. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like All right. What you, you, know, you know, it's funny for me watching the John Wick trilogy and finding that Keanu Reeves speaks Russian better than half of the <laughs> Russian. Actually, almost. Almost all of the Russian characters in the entire trilogy. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is one of the only two characters who speaks a fluent Russian, and I'm like, <laughs> uh, this is where this is where I have to roast real quick, Kabada. We I know that he is your he is your you know. Yeah, I know he's my yeah. piccolo. I get it. He's your piccolo. Okay. What? Like, 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 I can imagine, I, like, you know, Keanu Reeves doing like woo woo, and he got like a he gets a magical gi put on him. I can imagine that happening. But why is he piccolo? Because Keanu Reeves does not know that he adopted Kabuto back in 1990, <laughs> and he's still yeah 1995. And Kabuto here is still trying to say, "Notice me, senpai," or "No, notice me, dad." Notice, daddy. notice me. Notice you, daddy. This is what you do: you take your shirt off, write that on your titties, and like squeeze them together when you come. <laughs> now, now, I gotta say this. So, hey, hey, you know what? That's a good transition, D. I gotta ask all you guys this. So, what's up? Were you at all shocked? Now, granted, this was like early Sharon Stone. Obviously, this is before you know. Yes, I'm shocked too. That, right? I already know. You already know the. I already know the question. I'm shocked too. <laughs> Before basic instinct and all that stuff, right? I'm just saying, I'm, I'm laughing. Twins stayed in there too. Yes, <laughs> I'm laughing at just how little she does in this movie. <laughs> compared to gets. compared to like her compared to what she did in Police Academy, compared to what she did in fucking Action Jackson, I was like, wow, she didn't do at shit least we got in this movie. Sharon Stone, what I call frantic white woman. At least we got that from her. Get out! Don't stop it! Look, man, all, like, all I saw Sharon Stone doing the entire movie was just one time say, no, we're in danger. You should stop on your head. Which means that she does less for the main character than Adrian from Rocky. Man. Damn. Bruh. She does nothing. She's there for some... What type of moral support? What is he there? It's like... It's like when he actually has a moment with her and he's like, she's like, no, don't do it. He just says, <laughs> and he walks off. So it's like, what well, he did say, he did say, he did say, he did say in bed, honey, I'm going to be very transparent with you. I'm going to tell you, put it all out there and said nothing afterwards. I'm like, so I didn't really tell her anything. <laughs> No, but see, this, but see, this is why this is why compared to her in this movie, Adrian's a lot more supportive because at least Adrian tells Rocky not to go to the fight. But at least when he goes to the fight, she actually shows up at the end. Like, Rocky, I love you. Oh, and, 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 yo, and also told Rocky to nut the fuck up. I was like, wow. Oh. Also, she was there to tell, hey, look, that black dude named Clover <laughs> is gonna put number one and number two. All over you. You can't win. What do you think of? Get off screen. Get off screen. <laughs> you want to break it? But but, but I have to go to Aris. So oh, I gotta okay. go to but but Aris but Aris but Aris though. Share it though. What was your thoughts throughout this movie? Just seeing her in the film. <sighs> It's the Eric Bish it's the Eric Bischoff it's, it's, it's the Eric Bischoff, it's, it's, it's Bischoff face palm like oh <laughs> <laughs> what do I begin? 
Where did I begin with this effort? <laughs> you know, about a good hour into this movie, I forgot that was even Sharon Stone. Man, see, and then, see? Hold on, hold on. And then when I found out it was Sharon Stone, my mind just, I was like, wait, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Look, I completely forgot about the plot of this movie an hour in. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, no. I have to repeatedly remind myself what the plot was. <laughs> Dude, like Sharon Stone in, like enters the screen. I'm like, oh, like she's going to do something. She's bringing in the kid. And oh, wait, she's acting. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Yo, the thing with Sarah gives me, like I said, that's all she like. And hold on, this is the best part. I like. You remember when the uh, when the CIA came over there and he, you know, and then he was like, "No, don't do it." And all of a sudden, you see all uh, Steven Seagal's ball show. Like, no, no, my sense of good. Like, wait, so she lives with them? Like, this would be good information but, but D, but D, to tell D, the they're, audience. But D, they're Italian. Italian. You and, and, yep. and, 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 and you know, the moms always live with the families. You see, you know, it's because Italian. I'm sorry, reckless. Don't you mean? <laughs> what are you doing here at me, nigga? Come on now. Jesus, man. Get it right. Get it right. Jesus Christ, man. You know what, man? I told you, Steve. No, and, then, and before anybody says it, no, this is not ra- racist. You want me to make it racist? Okay. Prego. All right. Now, was- <laughs> we have lost uh, all two of our Italian listeners right now. Oh, yeah. You know what they said. Too. Oh, oh, oh. That's why I get oh. To- it's like different fall in this fucking. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, no, it's like, like this too. you guys said it wrong. It's ho. There you go. <laughs> it's like D. <laughs> it's like D. Like, why you have a red dot on your forehead? Oh shit! They found us. <laughs> oh shit, man. Oh shit. And because D ain't shit. Oh damn. The Olive God Buffy. <laughs> You have 24 hours to make this that right. Olive. And to make and to show that we're serious, you have 12 hours to make this shit right. <laughs> or you nah, sleeping, nah, nah. sleeping with the fishes. Like here's me. They don't mean that. I open up open up my door. I'm screaming, like, what's wrong? There's so many broken bread sticks in here. They fucking mean it. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't playing around, honey. Also, also, I'm supposed to believe Steve Zagal's wispy ass is Italian. I'm sorry. So just... is he? See, see, the joke I always put in the beginning of all the episodes of of, of Steve Zagal is Peter Peter off a of Family Guy saying, "Well, you you look Asian. Your last name <laughs> might be Jewish. <laughs> you might be Native American. What also, are you?" Also, I like that. <laughs> also, just to point out here to show our age and stuff, I just like how the movie was literally low key, like shitting on the CIA being ain't shit during the eighties. You know, the crack era, guys. It's the crack era. Era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So See, for, self-righteous. For me, for me, like every other scene of this movie made me think, you know, I could be watching Twenty Three Bridges right now. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Not watching Twenty Three Bridges instead of move uh, this movie. Wait, let me oh yeah, that's right. I got to review it with uh, with the three black geeks. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, trash. I mean, I'm supposed to be this guy. Supposed to see this girl. Supposed to be the guy to whistleblow. Like, see, we did fucked up shit in the CIA, and I'm like. Way to go, guys. I mean, it didn't stop the crack from coming in in the 80s, but whatever. Even when he walked off in Cambodia, I'm like, is is this where X-Men Origins got that subplot from? Like, <laughs> it really did. Yeah, it feels you like really had to bring up Origins, huh? You really had like to bring how, that fucking movie up? No, no. Let's bring up Life of One Bad off. Film for another. Let's, have, <laughs> let's, let's bring up how you walked off because it was like, just keep going, nigga. I'm out of here, man. I can't do it no more. And just lightly jogged off into the Cambodian <laughs> jungle. And I'm like, See, okay, we're in Chicago now. Okay, <laughs> how, how, how do you get home? Meanwhile, that, mom, there were so many questions after that. Me, meanwhile, no, it, was, it was I'm done, like I'm out, I'm through, and then time skipped to 1988 Chicago. Meanwhile, he had, yeah, meanwhile, christening a baby that clearly isn't uh, in, in Steven Seagal's. I'm not and saying I'm, that, Steve, and, they, and he's not saying that Steven Seagal is ugly. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have a question. No, I just have a question for uh, uh, like, like Fox, Fox, Hello, Boken. I, I just got a question for you guys. During the christening of their child, 
Uh, were you like me and you were hoping that the five families were gone, uh, were all going to get assassinated in, like, in the midst <laughs> of the christening? Or, 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 am I just thinking, or I'm sorry, or am I just thinking of a better movie? No, you're thinking funny about you what happens that. later in the movie. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned uh, the five families. Yeah, because the, because the mm, energy was high. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's funny you mentioned the christening in the five families because because uh, I swear to God some of those uh, those Sicilian dudes from from the christening I'm like haven't I seen those guys from the Godfather so I'm thinking wait here's what I think actually happened Coppola was was filming Godfather Part One Siegel accidentally walked on set and someone else just happens to capture footage of that and they're like well you know we gotta make money off of all the footage we got so let's make a Steven Seagal movie around these accidental takes of him walking into the set of Godfather. I, <laughs> I have one that. better. I have one better. I was I was not thinking that because the entire time I'm thinking, motherfucker, you have receding hairline in the eighties too. I mean, look. I mean, look. I mean, let's be real about this. I'm just. You know, he walks out of Cambodia. You got to realize, you know, immediately afterwards, that's when uh, they were smuggling them drugs from their drug war in Nicaragua. So, you know. In you Nicaragua, go. it's always like, I, lo I love like all the, and, like in every 80s movie, it always goes back to the jungle. <laughs> what happened mm -hmm. in the jungle? Whether it be I mean, Cambodia, Nicaragua, or, my, or in that really special case, Thailand. You know what I mean? I mean, but that was, that's what it was, though. It was like they, the CIA literally was doing those kind of fucking op shit in order to funnel drugs in here in the United States and shit. And it's just like, so let me get this right. They picked this guy who, again, this feels like a gentrifier's wet dream. He's like, yes, I went to China, I went to Japan, and I picked up on the arts of Akita. And yeah, he somehow yeah. became a grandmaster of a dojo. And I'm like, really, dude? Like, Yes, yes. Right, Steven Seagal just... is one of the few what I call Asian cosplayers that were very successful at what he did. I like Frank Dukes to like, you know, quit the first class. At least Steven Seagal did the work. Seagal finished it. See, to Chuck Norris's credit, when he went to Korea and learned Tung Sudo, at least he came back to the U.S. before exactly. starting to build dojo. At least, yeah. Steven Seagal did look, the work. Look, we talk trash about action Trump all the time, but let's just be honest, and it's true, there is data on that dude being nice with the keto hands. At least that is said. At least it is written down. So at least we know. I, at least we know. I still that. don't know. How, you know, looking at this, this being Seagal's first big movie, I still don't know how he became a star because well, let's be real talk. talk. He's kind of uninterested. Well, let's be real <laughs> too. Yeah, let's be real too. There's a reason why Frank Deuce probably never talked shit to Seagal because Seagal will probably broke his ass off, broke his ass off big time too. Yep. You already know it. <laughs> yup. Yep. Yep. But let, let's let's talk about the one thing that I don't I'm I want to talk about, and that is the one character who was who also headlined this motherfucking Pam Greer. Can we talk about Pangaroo real quick? I like how those uh, white dudes at that at that christening cookout was like, I would love to get with her. And I'm like, she ain't staring at your old balls, dog. It ain't happening. They, nah. Nah. They ain't I'm, happening. I'm just <laughs> mad that I'm just mad that Pam Greer had to not only give me a heart attack by getting shot in this. <laughs> Thank you. Friend, and I Thank say that. You. And the first thing I said, because I like I said, it's been years since I watched this movie. <laughs> Shut up, Eris. This be no, 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 DC. Hold on, see. So I, I'm sorry, but you, you see, you caught me in the. I just act. heard the gong. Heard no, 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 D, D. Listen, what all I was going to say was, I agree with you. That scene had me. That scene had me fucked up. That she took a shotgun that close range, <laughs> rolled down the stairs, and pretty much gets left for dead. And I'm like, yo, the disrespect. I'm gonna need everybody to press F in the chat to pay your respects. I mean, yeah, really, bro. It's like. Like I thought she, I thought she was gone. I was thinking about her here, yo, Seagal. This was the day there'll be so many blogs. Seagal had to let a black woman get shot oh, so he can the win. Did you, did you love the sad montage of him crying and looking at old stock seventies black exploitation photos of Pam Greer? And she was, <laughs> and he was actually crying. He was actually he crying voted. compared to Glimmer, to compared to Glimmer Man that we reviewed last year. You actually saw this nigga shed the Native American tear. But see, see, when you're when you're starting off acting, you know that was Steven Seagal. He was like, I got I got to show my acting chops in order to get. 
got show. He has to show something. Yeah, I show you know, something. You know, let, let me say. Let me tell you something. He showed more emotion in that one shot than he did of all of that scene of watching his wife get murdered in Alpha. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and Secret that side plot. Movie. Secret side plot. <laughs> it's like my wife got murdered. Uh, damn. But shame. no. But D. No, man. No, it wasn't. It wasn't it was my wife got murdered. Oh, it was, it, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Vulcan. It wasn't. It wasn't my wife getting murdered. Like it wasn't my wife getting murdered. Oh, moving on. It was no. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but it's, no. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like you, know, you know. It's it's like Vegeta when when uh, Beerus like a uh, bitch slaps a Bulma. It's like, yes. it's like my wife. It still don't beat the best thing in any Trumpito movie. Holy cow, my wife. <laughs> Mark for Death may have one of the m- most unnecessarily, unintentionally no, funny no. things I have ever no, seen no, no, in no, my no, life. On, on top of Steven Seagal with that fucking, I, I grew a fucking big ass fucking goatee that is clearly a fucking, like, uh, 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 I put it on <laughs> off screen. Also, and with Keith David making the usual Keith David stun face. You know this one. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! If you Keith get, David hey, makes look. that face in every single movie. Hey, look! If you can get that out of Keith David, shout out, shout out to John Carpenter and they live and, and they live. You know, you you're doing good. You're doing good. You're oh, doing good. excellent. <laughs> doing good. It's like wait a minute. So they did good. On Mark for death. Mark for death is actually a pretty good, good movie. I go with it. You know, Jama- Jamaican, Jamaican, <laughs> shitty Jamaican accents aside, you know. It's two niggas from Barbados doing their best Jamaican accent. <laughs> this is why I told folks, I was like, you can make fun of Luke Cage season two. I'm like, you guys haven't watched Mark for death. Don't say not at all. Word. Not at all. Luke Cage, you can't fight them. I'm like, that's actually a step on the side. Look, 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 I'm going to tell you this way. I'm going to tell you this way. At least that nigga do Capoeira. <laughs> 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 but I <Mariah> stokes. <laughs> but no, but no, but D, no, I, I was up there with you. I was like, so Pam Greer has eight days, and let's go. I mean, hey, hey, you, hey she's die. the only minority hire too, because I didn't see that. Well, other, to say, other, look, I'm other than the two black judge, guys oh, on the be a DA. I'm like, oh, she did. <laughs> other than the two black dudes who clearly vote Republican that were part of the CIA covering up that shit. <laughs> My man was smoking that cigar in front of the goal. I see what you're not gonna do is you're not gonna bother our client over here. Fuck man, I thought this nigga was at any time was gonna say, like, you get me Nino Brown. I thought he was gonna do that. <laughs> that is that the same dude though? Yes, it is. No, yes, that, is, that is that is test that is Tamalusi. You know the dude with the with the African name that we always butcher. That dude, uh, Rusala, Rusala. Is that how you said Russellala? Uh, I looked this up. Hold up. You know who I'm talking about, Chris. You yeah, know, we yeah I know what you're talking about. And matter of fact, we're going to do. Matter of fact, I'm. <laughs> and matter of fact, I'm actually thinking about doing a movie that he that he did called Cool Breeze. I'm thinking that we should do that. It's Pam. It got all the stars in that joint. You also, know what I mean? So I'm I, thinking I about to, that one. I have to point out this random fact. You have to pause it and see it. Shout out to John C. Riley playing a random bar patron when Seagal rolls up in there. Oh. I got one better for you. Shout out to Michael Rooker playing Man, a random even, bar I guy. Didn't see, yeah. I, didn't, I had to go back and see John C. Not being racist, Rooker, but kind, Rooker? Not, Rooker not being racist, but kind of sort of being racist. Hey, Chris, hey, Chris, hey, Chris, hey, Chris, chill. There wasn't a mic on him. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, <laughs> Michael Rooker looked like he was loaded up to say something. <laughs> fucking Irish. Something, you know. <laughs> yo, 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 Pam Greer rolled up in there with Steven Seagal and be like, oh, check out this Jigaboo over here. <laughs> like, well, well no, hold on. Remember, remember, he's eh, 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 in this one. Oh, look at the guinea. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's all weird. Yo, that's Michael Rook. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. First of all, no. See, yeah. Y'all going too extreme with Michael Rooker. He would have kept it real simple. Oh, look at this. There's a pair of Democrats walking in here. Man. Wow. 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 Looks wow. like somebody. Hold on. What year is it, 88? Looks like somebody yeah. voted for Jimmy Carter. Carter. <laughs> Reaganomics, bitch. So you and, so you really thought Dukakis was going to take over this country, did you? <laughs> I listen. I recently rewatched Days of Thunder. Michael Rooker's pretty good in that. I'm surprised. I'm surprised you didn't say. I, I am really surprised you didn't say the N word at any point. 
Me and Chris, I mean, when we did that for Worker Top Sports Show, we said the exact same thing. He said nigga once. He just didn't record it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, but like, well, I just like how, like, I like how Steven rolls into that, that clearly Italian bar and a bar patron is like, hey, man, don't mess up my bar. And I'm like, come on, dog. When you say that, you know your bar's going to get fucked up, right? You're, you're oh, fucked. First, of all, like, first of all, you you instigated that shit to begin with. Mm. You had this coming, bro. You had this coming. See, I want not My Steve. bar, hey. <laughs> And I like how, because I like how in every movie, Seagal has to be a problem solver, so the only reason why he was there was to save uh, some random woman's daughter. Mind you, I don't think you see her in the rest of the movie. Oh, you mean not not Rosie Perez? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Cousin Eris. He's Italian in this movie. That girl was clearly Puerto Rican. What are you telling me? We know this, D. But again, that is his cousin in the movie. She clearly stated it that that is my cousin. She's on the. She's on Wonderful. the. You know, I like how she's just sitting up there crying like she's on the drugs. You gotta help her. And I'm like, wow. and, and, and Seagal <laughs> being the best counselor ever. Hey, hey, don't cry. I'm hey, gonna. It's gonna be alright. You hear that voice? You hear that voice? It's just so calming. It's just so reassuring. <laughs> no, but, dude, that aunt was literally just like, you know what? I gotta be real. It's like any '80s movie when it, during the during the drug epidemic and stuff. She's on the crack. You gotta help her. You gotta help him. Oh my god! And I'm like, there's a and lot like of that. drugs on the on the dresser. And here. the best thing that he'll be like, hey, you wanna get high? You wanna get high? He slams his head on the all glass, <laughs> like start making sniffing and throws it against, like yeah, yeah. He pushes him against the wall. Hey, you know, I, I, I he's high like, on like. I, I feel like Steven Seagal in this movie was retroactive. I feel like Steven Seagal in this movie was retroactively trying to be uh, Denzel Washington from Equalizer 2. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yo, I oh, thought man, the guy was going to... I, I thought my man, <laughs> I thought my man was going to OD on crack as he's interrogating him. I'm like, so Seagal, you kind of bloodied his nose and he got like <laughs> fucking powder up his nose too, so no, you might want like, to ease up. <laughs> he, no, no, not want to ease up. He's hitting him on like, dude, he's on coke. He doesn't feel nothing. Dude, you, remember you, when, you, remember when, you remember when Joker said... You don't want to start with the head because everything after that, boom. See, I didn't feel that, bro. <laughs> you that understand that he's still he's still holding on to all of that that anger and frustration. Um, you know, all, dating all the way back to Vietnam when he had to watch a younger Joe Biden torture a man to death. I hate you, but you're right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he is talking about he is talking about one of my real talk, one of my favorite character actors, the great and still alive, and this nigga is ninety two years old, Henry Silva. Henry Silva was one of the best character actors between nineteen seventy and until about the mid nineties, and around that time he retired. He's in the. He was in everything. He's in the. uh, He is in the uh, Black Weeb anthem of a movie, Ghost Dog. So. (laughs) Um, yes, yes, yes. He is in Ghost Dog as the lead mobster that Ghost Dog is trying to hunt down. He's in one of my favorite. Him. He's in one of my favorite um uh, MST3K um movies. He it was I think it was uh, it was called like Escape from New York or something. It was basically it was oh. like Escape from New York, but it was, a, it was an Italian knockoff, and he was the villain in that movie. And See, clearly, him it, it, it clearly and clearly Henry Silva was getting paid. A whole lot of money to be in that Italian movie. Sisu, I was going to say that Nelson was Joe Biden, but you're right. I thought Nelson was Joe Biden. Nah, nah, nah. Nah. Henry Silva got the little neckline, that little tight neckline (laughs) that Joe Biden got. (laughs) But had real quick, and and then when he reappears, and then then when he reappears in the movie as the movie's main villain, he was rocking the uh, the 2009 uh, Joe Biden cut. Man, what did Uh, I? Or as I like to say, what is that you're using in your hair? What type of <laughs> some slip back hair there, buddy? Silva, He pulled. That's what I call pull up behind a seventeen year old. Strawberry. <gasps> oh. <laughs> the oh. Hey, my man. <laughs> Um, like, 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 I, I didn't say that Joe Biden. No, I did I'm not sorry. say that he touched young women or nothing. Just See, smells. I am very, yeah, I am very sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. You went there. I have to play this. I am a kill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
I mean, yo, I mean, it, it, it kind of jives with the scene where, you know, he was like, where's your uniform? You sitting up there having, you sitting up there doing drugs with a 15 year old. What's wrong with you? And I'm like, I mean, it was the 80s, man. It was kind of legal. Also, kinda also, here's way. me. We're not going to see none of y'all in the rest of this movie, y'all. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not but all. no, Silva was also in my favorite movies growing up. And that was Dick Tracy. Yes, he was. Who was he in Dick Tracy? Wrinkle face. He was the wrinkly wrinkle face. That guy. (laughs) Which which I'm sitting there like, did you really did you really need prosthetics for him at that point? No, you didn't. That's fucked up. Dude, that's messed up. He he (laughs) wasn't. Warren Beatty got all the prosthetics in that movie. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I like to say for the record, as much as that's my favorite movie, that is the di- yo, yo, he could never get that shit made now. The budget, if you look at the backstory of Dick Tracy, they, like he spent a lot of money on the it's a it's a high concept movie. It is yeah, so high concept. It's one of those movies where even back then, hey yo, chill on this budget, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, like I know we, we talked about this at nausea on three. Like, yes, you there is still possibility to make these movies where there's a lot of prosthetics and all the rest of that. Did you have any idea the money that's going to have to be put behind I mean, that? I mean, and Netflix I'm not was saying money that you at it. shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should it, but you see all the great effects that happen are a combination of CGI and practical effects. So you just can't do one all the way no more. I, I think that's just not going to be, you know, because you make all CGI. What we always say, it looks like shit, right? It always looks like shit when it's oh, just you know, CGI. You know, when, it's like when a... you bring in the practical effects. It's when you bring in actual smoke. It's when you actually have your actors, you know, take a bump. Like or a, in a, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like something, something, Planet Rising, you know, that show. Um, Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Um, anyways, so like I'm just sitting there and I'm like, so this guy is doing crack with a 15 year old, and I like how she's the typical teenager that's like, You don't tell me what to do, dad. I was waiting for her to say, I sucked his dick, dad. You ain't gonna tell me. I'm like, Whoa, whoa. what you gonna do? What you gonna do? You gonna tell on me? You gonna tell me now? I'm gonna escort you off the movie, and nobody's gonna ever see you again. Well, she told well, he told Pam Greer to like take her home, and I'm like, How did he know she made it home though? (laughs) <laughs> it was Pam Greer. Pam Greer dog. Come on, that's off you, man. She probably more, more than like she punched that chick in the mouth. <laughs> punched her in the fucking. Uh uh-uh, uh. Uh-uh. That black woman, uh uh-uh. uh. Mm-hmm. That, that came out. Uh uh-uh, uh. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, you ain't gonna yeah, talk to me that way. No, no, no. All that little trifling mess she doing. Girl, you high. <laughs> And also, Take your ass also, home. When I was watching the movie, like I don't know if it's because of a glare, but like her skin tone looked a little too light for her to use a certain word with the long Y. <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, for a second though, I was thinking we might have a Vasquez from 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 Aliens situation where yeah. Yeah, I thought, yo, look, it's funny that people now realize that she's actually a white person in brown that was in brown face, but at the time, people thought she was Hispanic, you know and, she, you know and she rode that shit. For a longest damn time, we were just talking about uh, we were just talking about off uh, on during the war about our boy Fisher Stevens, man. So come on now, man. It, yeah. It's amazing the, the the browning the browning that happened in Hollywood at that time, man. Yeah. So so the whole the whole movie. So they're trying to figure out where the drugs are coming in at and stuff, and how it's tying into like you know. I guess the whole situation at the beginning with the the Italian mob and stuff, and they're doing a bust. And per usual of these films, there's always that one cop that fucks it up and stuff on the bus. Like they went in too early. Fuck. All right. Uh, I guess we gotta go in and we get our action scene. And it's like the most funniest shit ever, where Steven literally punches the fucking side of a window during a car chase. And I'm like, is that possible to do that? I don't know. <laughs> Come yeah, on, man. Is that- I, I'm, I'm starting to get flashbacks of the movie Hannibal. <laughs> like, <laughs> like at the beginning of the film, it's like, it's like, okay, we gotta, we gotta catch this, this, this woman who's a drug lord in Central America. Be careful, she's confirmed to have AIDS, so don't let her spit on you. And then, and then, like, and then this one guy goes in the gun first before like everyone gets the go ahead, and he's the like the one guy who gets killed. I'm like. Y'all lucky you're the only one who got killed. The fact that they sat there, they're sitting up there in the meatpacking uniforms, and I'm like, y'all guys looking very obvious like cops, but okay, sure, fine, whatever. Like, no, I mean, no, they no, no. See, Chris, they will disagree with you. They would all be high-fiving themselves, going, <laughs> This is the best cover we've done ever. 
No, no, no. That's the second best cover. The, the best cover is just putting on a, a a hat sideways and and a t-shirt that says rock band and be like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's all the drugs? Where's Who has the, the marijuana? <laughs> where's the marijuana at? Where can is I get anyone... that marijuana and, and a heroin? <laughs> Does anyone know where I can find the local drug of this neighborhood? <laughs> like, because I think I, cause I like how one of the guys that was supposed to be doing the bust i was waiting if they actually did go through it would probably be that one guy that would really enunciate his italian You're like hey what's going on paisanos and i'm like wow man you're really kind of showing yourself here like <laughs> yeah. ease up a little bit just ease up or, or, or be like peter griffin when he sneaks into meg's school it's like does anyone have any drugs i'm looking to score some drugs <laughs> i'm looking to score some drugs <laughs> but dog no, they like when they get into the car chase and stuff he dives onto top of the car and they're shooting on top of the car. And I'm like, how are you guys missing? Because he literally punched his hand through the door and grabs a dude by the throat and you're still missing. What is that going was, on here? That was there's comedy only, right there. There is only about, I want to say about a good, about a good two and a half inches of of space between the hood and the gun. So like, how and, are and, you he's station, and he's stationary too with the guy wrapped around his throat, which I still think is funny because my man has this fucking, he has the fucking jaws of death on his throat. I was like, man, you about ready to choke this dude out. Like, you know, and then, you know, they get in an accident and then that's when, uh, you know, he gets taken to jail and we found out that the CIA is kind of sort of in the pockets of him and his, group basically that's where it got like i'm like okay yeah i can understand him having the power to do so but why is he there like it just seems like you know random and messy you know what i mean like well, i mean you can like an actual work. but you kind of could see like you kind of was like all right where's this plot going because in my head i was like yeah silva's gonna come back into the plot at some point i don't know when but he's gonna factor in and also nelson's gonna pop up and stuff which nelson's role in this movie it was just like so nelson are you with silva are you not with silva i don't know like are you just he was a wild con- card he was the connection remember in the mo- beginning of the movie he told nico to get out of there and when nico got out of there he stayed he stayed with him, and now he's a bad guy, and now he's corporate. He's corporate CIA. So, so, so is this? So, so, D is this, so for all the wrestling fans, is this like when The Rock left the nation and went to the corporate corporation? Corporation? No, you know? no, no, no. It's not no. that. No, not this that. is like no, he was still The like, Rock. This is Val Venus joining Right to Censor. Chill out, man. It ain't that. <laughs> it ain't that fun. No, no, no. It was. It was the the um, New Age Outlaws joining uh, the Authority. Oh, man, that was that made those, weird, that, that, that that whole you know what, you know what, as much as I dug it at the time, I look back on something like this is some corny ass shit. <laughs> uh, hey, look that. Hey, look, man. I mean, Seth Rollins like I'm gonna fucking end Edge's life by stop curse stopping if you don't sign that contract. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa buddy, I, that's hey, murder. That you just there was a lot of television. There was a lot of cool <laughs> shit that came out of that shit, but at the end of the day, it was like yeah, this is dumb. Back in two thousand, this would have slapped. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, yes, yes. <laughs> but, but anyways, but like, but, but you got that right. So this is why I said like the black guys at the CIA. It was like I, I know you guys vote Republican. I could just tell. It just just why I, it why just why, why is it a, is it the David Robinson haircuts that they had? Is that the reason why I do? Hey, hey hey, at least they had lineups and shape ups. More than most black Republicans did at that time. Let's just be real. Well, again, you call them Republicans. What made you think these niggas even voted? <laughs> First off, sir, um, I think we have yeah. family members of that age at that time that probably uh-huh. did locally voted for uh-huh. Reagan and uh-huh. Bush. Uh-huh. So, Chris, 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 you forgot what generation they came out of. And on top of that, they're working with a government agency, and they see the very worst of humanity. I, I think if there's any black man that is unplugged and not vote, it would be a black man that is within the CIA. True. Hey, look, look. I'm only speaking. I'm only speaking to my older uncles that lived in fucking damn Bowie and was like, "Hey, y'all guys should fucking move out of DC to Bowie." And hey, I'm like, hey, hey, Ross Perot's going to change this motherfucking country." <laughs> it's like, it's like, Ross hey, um, hey, Bob Dole. There we go. There we go. It's like, hey, uncle. Um, I think my uh, relatives in DC don't have money to move to Bowie, so they got to deal with the drug war. I'm sorry. It's just what it like, is. Like, look. The point is, these these old black guys, the, like, all, like, all the black guys that was in there. They were just they were just background dudes I seen in other movies. That's why I said, "Hey, you." <laughs> no, but I just love that we got. It was like Pan Grid. I was like, "Oh, we got 
three black people in this movie. Is this a black movie? Maybe. No, 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 no. Stop. It's Seagal, Chris. There's nothing black about anything Seagal has ever been in. I know that he did a movie where DMX was there. DMX had to say nigga officially ten times for that to be a black movie. So I, right? know, so I know I also think DMX got pa- I mean, I, well, I say DMX. God damn it, D. Um, I also low-key think Seagal got Pan Greer because he thought he could get a move on her and it didn't work out, so he was like... All right, Pam. I guarantee the joke's on you. The joke's on you, Chris. I don't believe I don't believe Seagal was interested in Pam Greer at all. Mm. Yeah, I don't think he was interested in Pam Greer or Sharon Stone. D, are you about to say, yep, the Puerto Rican girl, the first <laughs> man? Yep. <laughs> Who I'm gonna be real. If I, I know Seagal's track record. Real, real. I notice, he, oh. like, notice, like, notice, like notice he talked the softest when he was around. <laughs> real talk. I'm gonna say this. He I think she sure. I, I feel she was 18, but she looked 15. No, she was 18, Chris. Don't don't start that little hey, I feel <laughs> don't don't don't. That's what gets in trouble with a girl. That's why black girls with that's what you No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't, go, I wasn't. Start I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't going. I wasn't. I wasn't going with that. But it's just like the fact that that movie tried to sell me that she's fifteen. I'm like, you look like you eighteen. She was but... fifteen. She was fifteen. That girl but the movie tried to play it up. But they, but she they tried to play it up. Twenty six. But they tried to play it up because again, you know, at that time, it's like, hey, she she obviously went to a private school. Where's your uniform? And I'm like, oh, she has a uniform. I thought she went to public school, but all right. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Also, Chris, you are focusing way hard on that scene that meant nothing to nothing. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, look, man, they were really trying to emphasize that drug shit. I was like, so this is the inroads that. But, Steve- wait, you know what? Here's the thing about that. I that drugs was the problem in this movie. Well, the neighborhood also, like- also also he didn't like drugs in his neighborhood because remember, guys, everybody knows Nico in the neighborhood by first name basis. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But stop. <laughs> it's like nah. Second nah. of all, second of all, no, if you're gonna do that, like at least say something racist with it. Macaroni. At least do that something, man. I don't know. But anyway, oh uh, spaghetti. Um <laughs> meet the ball. <laughs> Matza. <laughs> <Red. laughs> <laughs> 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 Ferrari. No, I got one. <laughs> I got one for you, D. Let's go. No, no, no. Now see, no, no. See, that's going to get us banned. See, that's going to get us banned. You know the Italians, they joke with you until you bring up Mario. Nah, nah. See, oh. I, see this is why I was fighting words. See, this hey, is I don't know about you. I don't know about you, D. Uh, according to uh, Aloe's, uh, <laughs> according to his reaction there, I think he disagrees with you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, oh boy, if I could, I'm like, I'm like fucking Brad Pitt and the Glorious Bastards. I'm, I'm, I'm the dude that's like, say Bongiorno, Bongiorno. <laughs> that's me all the way on that. One. I, saw, I had this kid that was Spanish in my class about to fight. I mean, I'm, I never forget this. He's about to lay this motherfucker out, and why? Because he called them the flea off of Mucha Lucha. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna tell Not you what happened. Ricochet what happened? on Moila girl? Are you serious? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He called him the flea, and I gotta tell you something. The flea fucked him up. Caesar, <laughs> thank you. That's what happened. My little nigga Caesar fucked this dude. <laughs> dude, like anybody, like you know, God, we really were horrible in the in the in the in media with Spanish people because Los Luchadores pops up immediately. Y'all got, y'all got, y'all got oh a, my Jesus! Y'all motherfuckers got a bunch of white people in lucha masks and said <laughs> Los Luchadores. I'm like, what? And not even white people. You got Canadian people in fucking luchador masks. This is horrible. okay. Okay, no, no, I I can one up that the show Los Luchadores. <laughs> <laughs> which is basically which is which is basically 60s Batman with 90s technology <laughs> where his day job is being a luchador. <laughs> <laughs> There is something to be said. Like, I, like I'm just like you know. Alan, that was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I'm looking at Fox. Like, so Fox. I'm just, like this, this Canada. This this is your this is your show. Like, what's going on here? Like, I don't I don't get this. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, yo 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 yo. Listen, I only watched Los Luchadores because Time Force came on right before. You that. had no choice. You had no. I choice. had no choice. <laughs> 
It's like, I got wait, oh, man. Wait, when, when Arthur Bogart found out, I still remembered that show. He was so pissed. Yo, and my man was driving. Yo, here's how fucked up it was. He drove the same type of fucking lowrider that fucking Eddie Guerrero came Girl, out yes! and shit. That's what made the show so fucked up. I was like, bro, come on, man. Oh, my God. I do love Canada. And one of the weirdest parts of that show is how, like, the most recurring villain is, like, this chihuahua with a pain <laughs> mask. <laughs> no! He's a chihuahua with a pain mask. And because, because like, freaking, like, it belonged to, like, this evil scientist who wanted to give him some cheetah legs. And then a mishap occurred when, like, the main character, so- Lobo Fuerte, like, stopped one of his crimes, like, 60s Batman style. And then, like, some some jolt from the machine that gave him the, those cheetah powers, like, hit the chihuahua in the head. So then it became this mastermind. And so, for some reason, but they never explain why it's wearing the Bane mask, though. Yeah, that, that, okay. that, it, it, there's episodes on YouTube. Okay. If you never get a chance to watch <laughs> okay. it. Okay. No. Um, Stop it. So, I'm sorry. Gaddafi, get off. It really, yeah, it really was no, WMSC for no, white dudes. It really was. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't get lying. off this chat, please. <laughs> he ain't lying, man. <laughs> That that was white people's version of what they thought was luchadors, and I'm like, yo, this is fucking making me weep for fucking WCW. You know what kills me? You want, See, you know, you want, kills oh, me. But here's the thing that kills me, even in that same vein, where it's a more respectable type of thing. Lucha Underground comes out. Oh man, it's cool. It's very, you know, trying to get the roots of you know, like luchadors and. Why is Vampiro a white Canadian the one that's telling us about? All this? D, don't get, D, don't, 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 please, D, do not get. Do Play my fucking get, music, D. I just like, I just no, like, no, D, do not get started on this. I just like because to say, Chris, because I just Chris like to say, and I, that, hold on, that, that, hold, oh, wait, Chris, I was gonna say, please do not get us started because Chris and I actually interviewed Vampiro. I just like to say for the record, that was the most. Fun, unintentional, funniest interview I have ever had, and I love Vampiro. The look on my face during the interview, it's like it was a great interview to me, at least, because I was asking some really good questions. I got some good answers. It was great. Looking back on the interview, it's like, yo, Vampiro is a crazy motherfucker, man. Like, <laughs> holy shit. Like, yo. Gaddafi, go, hold on. Gaddafi, go to your room. Go to your room. <laughs> Most Lucha Dordas, the Taco Bell of Super Sentai. Go to your room. The Taco God. Bell. But, <laughs> nigga, go to your room. Let me tell you something about Kadabi. shows up in every show, or just about every show, to say some wild shit and throw us the fuck off. So if it's best, you don't look at what this little nigga got to say. I'm sorry, wait. Pam Greer, uh, she's now the Gen X black man, Farrah Fawcett. Okay, that's Kadabi. true. What is this, Kadabi? No, no, Kadabi, this is for you. But but I have to go to Aloe on this one because he brought up a good one right at the beginning of the movie. So Aloe, how, how did you love that that Steven Seagal tells everybody to get down with the most shittiest bomb? Get down. Get down. <laughs> Bro, it's like he like I was just because he went to church on that day because the pastor told him like when he was showing all the like what was what we later found out as refugees like come in there. Yeah. And then you just see the whole church, like just playing now. You see the pastor, like going forward, and you see this. Well, this one lady who we never see again at all in this movie, just like walks away <laughs> with like a pink, like a like a back, like L soup or some shit. With, with the C four that was found out late, like earlier in the movie, she he that so that's. I don't know how this man so alone. That's the wrong. Dude, she got one mouth out, out the building, and it was like get down. I'm like. Let me like, that's not enough. like like can you imagine if like can you imagine if it was just like some random lady who walked out the building because I don't know okay, like what if this movie happened whoa, whoa, nowadays? Whoa. What you trying to say? Like hypothetically speaking, he was, he was if- vigilant. He was vigilant. Can't you look, look at the picture that's above me? His eyes are wide open. <laughs> Let me tell. Like, like, let me tell you guys. Can you imagine something. if if they try to make the same movie present day, and, and like the and the woman walks out, walks out of the church? It's like you don't know if she walked out of the church because there's a bomb. For all you know, she got a text message saying, "Oh, the uh, the your your baby's sick. The sitters uh, uh, called nine one one. You better get out." Like like there Ooh. could be no bomb there. In our a post- a a, uh, a broken real, real talk. 
let's just sum it up like this. Seagal is the worst person that you want being a lookout for anybody, especially for public safety. You know, he did a terrible <laughs> job of having somebody's back. You know who did a better job? This is a better example. Slippy, watch out. Bogey on your tail. Yeah, I mean, I mean, seriously. I mean, because, uh, yo, here's the kicker, right? In our post-9-11 world and stuff, you know how that scene would play out? They would, it would have been more fucked up because you would have had a little girl like, ma'am, ma'am, you left your bag in there. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. And, and, and also, and also, oh, like, and also like, if the intention was specifically to kill that other uh, pastor. priest. Yeah, the, the other pastor. Sorry, I, I don't know my church ranks. because oh, you're fine. Not, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah, so, priest, <laughs> pastor, it's all the same. <laughs> priest, uh, pastor. Deacon, priest, pastor. Hold deacon, on. Deacon, vicar, father. He's a Catholic, he's a Catholic yeah. priest, so yeah. you got to so, get it right. So, no, you got to get it right. He's a Catholic priest. Rapist. Catholic priest. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so I'm like... Did this woman not have a picture of her target so she knows that the specific no. she ends up killing yeah, is the nope. correct one? Like I, I got see- a question. Who was the other white guy they kept on showing in that scene? It was I don't senator. know. He was a lawyer or something. Lawyer. Like, he was, he he was, was a lawyer. Li- it was a he senator. Was literally, yeah, he was, he was a senator. literally yeah. mercy <laughs> from a Batman v Superman. First of all. <laughs> That's very true, Boken. Second of all, Chris, I am mad at you for what you had just said about two minutes ago. You want to because you know what scene is you know like, right. You already know what's no, you know what scene playing in uh played in my head. The scene from Gundam Wing. Excuse Man. me, Nick, you dropped your makeup kit. You <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, episode five <laughs> throws the bomb. <laughs> you, know, you, know, the, 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 you know the you know the sad thing is I don't know if uh, it's kind of ironic that like the bad guys are supposed to be CIA because I've seen this I've read uh documents of the CIA having more successful attempts at killing Fidel Castro than killing this one priest. Well, bro, <laughs> I can't I mean, I can't I mean, mind that. Thing. Here's my, thing. Here's my thing, guys. They do later in the movie, you know, Seagal gets one of his Filipino contact with a uh, bank, oh, wow, Cambodian contacts and stuff, right? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, so let me get this right. We have five assassins in this country right now. And I'm like, all right, five assassins. This might be going somewhere. We might get somewhere. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. No. Nothing. The only assassin no. we saw was the bomber lady who. That's it. I'm like, all right, okay. So First of all, yeah, yeah, well, just, just like, just like, Bob. my my interest suddenly peaked, but then it just waned away because we never get anything out of that. This is a bigger. Could you, could you imagine the NES game that we would have got out of this? We had to defuse a bomb that didn't need to be defused. The worst part been... about, and the worst part about that, D, none of the characters would have looked like their movie counterparts. No. Except for Gaul. Except for Gaul. No, don't be a, a video game character, VXD. <laughs> this, 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 this is more of the bigger... This, this is the biggest disappointment next to, like, Arkham Origins when they hyped up, like, eight assassins. Batman yeah, has to face oh off against God. them. And I was like, all right, cool. And then, and then all the of a sudden... It's Deathstroke battle, and then eventually you fight Bane. That's oh, about man. it. A whole bunch of... A whole bunch of... Gl- from a whole bunch of glorified CQ... Uh, freaking uh, QTE moments. Coming like, from someone who actually loves Arkham Origins, that they dropped the ball heavy on that pl- uh, plot. The only one they that really me, did. The only one that had me roll on his electric dude when Batman just kicked him in the face. I was like, oh, that was a good boss battle. <laughs> just bam. I'm like, well. Hey, hey, Chris, you know what's so sad? I'm watching my kids. Know what I said, my kids. I'm oh, watching my kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching them play <laughs> Arkham Knight. There's nothing worse than seeing a good-looking game be shitty but have interesting plot points, but at the very same time be one of the worst retellings of the Red Hood story uh, I have D, ever D, seen. D, 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 D. Deathstroke is a tank battle. That's how much they fucked that up. I See, a, a, a free copy. Uh, I got a free copy now. of Arthur exactly. Knight. I am. I am not. I still have not played it. Hey, I, I downloaded it. Hey, I downloaded it for free. Beat it, and I was like, I'm good. <laughs> I got into a I, verbal I got, battle I, with my I eleven year old. For like seven bucks on Steam. I will, I, will, I will never, I will never do those Riddler challenges. I looked at that ending like, hey, all right, I'm good. Hey, check this out. Check this out. I got into a verbal battle with my 11 year old. Why can't I re-download it? Don't put that on my PlayStation. But Dad, no. But Dad, I really, really want to beat the game. Good. Don't you ever pass me the fucking controller. I am not playing that ball of mess. And look, for you. 
And look, and I'm looking around there. I'm like, all right, so what you doing now, son? You're sneaking up behind the tanks in the Batmobile. Yeah, you're doing stealth moves in the Batmobile. Yeah, this game is See, the more, the this more game I is stupid. I have not touched Arkham Knight, but the more I have heard about the game in the past six years since the game was released, I am still thanking God that I have not touched that game yet. Again, it is one of the most good-looking games you will ever see, combined with one of the most ill. No, I'm not playing this. And if you get one lick of the story, you'd be like, okay, where's next? <laughs> like, but here's, the, here's, the, here's, here's story-wise, right? So this is where the movie gets weird. So after the after I'm the sorry. bomb, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the part where it got this weird. No, no, you know because what, the tra- yo, you know transition, transition is weird. You know what it got weird, weird, weird for me, Chris? Chris, you know when it got weird for me when I saw Seagal run, and I was like, "She actually wrote it." Okay, 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 okay. <gasps> oh so, my God. okay, so so check it, so check it, right? At one point, Seagal, he's going after one of the guys, right? <laughs> and. He gets into a gun battle and stuff, and he had he literally is chasing after him. That is the first and only time you will ever see a full sprint Steven Seagal in the movie ever, ever. Uh, and ever. much like uh, and nah, much I, like wait, your I noticed boy. something else. I noticed something else too. By the way, uh, Chris, we're we're seeing Steven Seagal do a full sprint run. However, I, I'm having some discrepancies with this. Was it <laughs> him running, or was that Kurt Russell in stunt double running? It, it know, kind man. of did look like a stunt double for two seconds, didn't it? Like during that tackle, like like that one, Steve. Like, also, also, like it always you make it makes you think that because we're so used to Steven being a fat ass. You know what I mean? Also, so we're just like, also looked like Seagal was running down the man in low top uh, black force ones. I think I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. Oh, I, get to. I was like, hold up, Seagal running? What? <laughs> no, no, right? <laughs> hey, that's what I'm saying. This is the hey. Look, look. Look, seeing slender Steven Seagal, I want people to understand this. Like, you see the picture in the back, right? It feels surreal seeing him in a fucking wife beater. And I'm like, man, this is like the probably the only last time he saw himself with a fucking four pack. Because after this, not so much. You know, it's kind of weird with Seagal. There's like no definition with him either. There no, really he was isn't. like, uh, you know what it is? He's like the old, like the 1950s, like Clark Gable. Like, I'm fit, but like, I'm not cut. You ever see that? Like, 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 like you ever see an old Robert Mitchum ordering on lean? You ever see an old Robert Mitchum movie? He's sticking out his chest like this. It's like, oh, dog, oh, 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 oh. dog. Like, I'm waiting oh. for you to exhale real quick. If any of y'all have been inside of a gym, like Gold's Gym, you taking a piss and they got the picture of like 1956 Gold's Gym in Venice Beach and those big muscle dudes like this and shit. I'm like, oh, that was a definition of fit back then. Yeah, oh yeah, stick it at your chest. Oh, that's how that's how Vern Gagne was a champion. He was <laughs> well, really yeah, just, you know, Teddy Roosevelt. He was really was just 210 pounds. pounds. But Teddy he Roosevelt was really doing ju- this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This. Like that is what fit looked like back then. And <laughs> and in fairness, he did take a bullet and it's like, no, I'm not going to the hospital. I'm gonna hey, finish my speech first. <laughs> side note, side note, that is the probably the funniest one of the funniest jokes in Fist fight when it was accident accident old boy. So Come on, guy, put up your fist. And he did like this and shit. And Tracy Morgan is like, man, you're going to fucking lose, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somebody, somebody said, see, that's how all those white boys like the, lost to Jack Johnson. They was coming up and doing that little put in your big shit. Jack was like, nah, nigga, come on. <laughs> Jack was all over nah, cuz. Nah, nah, we don't, we don't look, just keep it real for us. Nah, we ain't fight like that on the plantation, bro. Nah. Yeah, the, update, the updated one is, uh, you know, early. The guy that wears the UFC tap out shirt was like, "Come at me, bro!" And they can't, and they don't do not a <laughs> lick gloves. of UFC. He had gloves like Joe was telling us, like the guy that wears the UFC gloves and don't do not a lick of fucking Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or nothing. It's like this is all for show, huh? All right. You know, I I do find it funny though. Steve a goal run. No, but way that seems so funny is that not only did he run homeboy down. Kicks the motherfucker. His friend comes, hey, that's my buddy. What you, hey, man, I'm not in the mood. I'll show you what's in the mood. And Seagal just hit him with a short punch and the homie just drops. Mm-hmm. I like how he walks, and then he walks past the black boy. Hey, what's up, homie? <laughs> no, my, my man was like, no, nah, man. The best part story. about that, the best part about that scene, after he drops big dude, he walks by the two black guys, and the two black guys really have no, they have no choice but to respond and jive. 
<laughs> but also, but also too, I like how again to show the beginning of it when they rolled up on them and stuff. <laughs> they rolled up on this fool, and they came out there. They had the fucking machetes and stuff. I like how my man got his arm sliced off, and he immediately dies. Now, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm pretty sure you're alive to a degree. This man got his arm sliced off and he's dead. I'm like, wow, that was quick. (laughs) I give that entire assassination attempt a solid F. I don't know. I give it. I give it a D minus for. No, no, no. Let me explain this, Chris. Please, nah, Chris. That was hit, man. No, no, no. Let you retry. Please let me explain. Let me explain this, please. First of all, you take the time to back up a drop top in front of Seagal. That's you know you you took the time to back it up. Number two, you took the time to set up a joke like, "Hey, I heard you was looking for so and so." Yeah, I am. You got any information on him? <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Yeah, right here." You pull out the gun. The fact that you didn't shoot him, okay? Maybe you know y'all y'all need to take some time. This is a movie. Fine, take some time. Mm-hmm. Everybody, get out. Surround the mother- like surround the motherfucker first. I-, I get that. I get that. Okay, this is a movie. I let that slide. Mm-hmm. Strike three. I'm I'm done. Seagal, wash these motherfuckers. The moment he said, "Oh no no no, I'm not gonna shoot you. I'm not gonna shoot you." We're just gonna beat you up really bad. Kick the ass. I'm like, kick yeah, all of the ass. ass. Please. But you know what? <laughs> my thing is this too. No, but you like, know what no, right. no, I mean, no, no. Just from hearing all that, only one thing went through my mind. All of y'all. Gotcha trash. I mean, let's be yeah. real. My man, here's my thing. My man that Steven Gall Seagal ran down, he could have been ran and had like a two-mile lead on Seagal. Like immediately. I'll be like, yo, fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> That's before he killed the last dude. That's why I was like, "Why are you still standing around, dude? Go, go, run, run, run!" And shout out to my man who got literally sliced in half. I mean, I mean, there was some people that ate in this movie. I wouldn't give it that, man. Also, like, to go murdering people in front of civilians, and they're just sitting there like, "Huh, just another day in the neighborhood." <laughs> you know what? Day. No, I mean, in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Suburb, yeah, yeah, yeah. Suburbs, yeah. suburbs of Chicago. <laughs> You know, back when Chicago like the, wasn't wasn't represented as the murder capital of the world by blacks. So you know Nah nah. No, it wasn't, Chris. It was very, very fucking corrupt. It always been corrupt. No, I'm just saying that nowadays it's always like, oh, the blacks and stuff. Back then we didn't really get that. It did the stigma wasn't there. I like yet. I like I like how you said all oh, the blacks. <laughs> Thank no, you that's, that. that's the go-to now. Every politician is like, oh, Chicago and them black people and stuff and guns. Yeah, and I'm like I'm like Oh, all right, I told you. Told you somebody. All right, looks like all those Mexicans out there playing their Lukaku Racha music. Hey, with hey their look, Coronas. This, it's hey, trying this to is, stop them. Like, hey, this what? is why. This is why I understood why Corey was pissed off every time politics in Chicago. It's like, nigga, I'm from Chicago. What the fuck is going on here? This is bullshit. <laughs> this is not like, happening yo, in Chicago. Kid, but then, but, but you know, here's a funny thing. Here's, here's one of the funniest things in the movie to me. Seagal not only kills somebody. He, Seagal gets a couple of what I call the straight up Mortal Kombat finishers that he performs on people. One of the best ones was this nigga backing up a Chrysler into <laughs> backing up a Chrysler on the dude. The dude flying out of the fire out of the garage. Oh, I like how it was a dummy error. It's like, I, man, I, I, yeah, it was a dummy. I, point, dummy. I pointed out that it was the dummy. And then we see him fall. Then you hear he him falls literally. No, he falls, the tracks. Yo, he falls and lands on the third rail. And I go. Fatality. <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, guys, 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 guys. What you're not realizing, I'm, y'all guys are going to die laughing. I'm mad you didn't mention this. All right? My man had time to take off his shoes and try to throw it as a goal. I was gonna, I was gonna get to that, Chris. He took the time out to take off his shoes. I'm like, bro, that is not George Bush. You were throwing the shit the down. I to I'm like, bro, you took your shoes off the door. It's a goal. Wait a minute, like how? You take your shoes off? Like not taking, not take out the fucking car. <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? Like, you I could, like how you, there's you cannot simply, kill you cannot simply. You took the time to take your shoes off. You didn't think for two seconds. The fact you took both shoes off. You didn't think for two seconds to just combat roll off the like, off the trunk of that car. No, at most, no, no, at, no. Most, at most, you might your arm might got rolled by one of the tires, but you still be alive. No, 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 Chris. All you had to do was make sure that the second you jump off, you tuck and roll. Yeah, 
Right, Eris, you're not mentioning the best part about all this. While he's going backwards 30 miles per hour, the rest of the people with guns in their hands. Yeah. You mean the fact that there's a group of bad yeah. guys? You mean the fact that there's a group of bad guys standing around with guns like the cops and ET? I gotta oh, be no. honest with you. This is they, 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 these are top ten the worst goons. I have seen. Yeah, let's be real. I mean, it's, 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 it's like that. Uh, it's like that meme that D put in our private chat about the Resident Evil Four, where Chris opening up his gun attached is like, "Aren't you guys supposed to be paused? Why are you looking at me going through my uh, attach case?" I like how that one dude said this. Why are you moving your gun? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, that why do you Aaron. have ammo Aaron's for it? No, no. Aaron said that to me when he saw my inventory one time. It's like, why, why is there no herbs in here, D? What are you doing? I was like, why is there so no? Why is there all of this ammo for a gun you don't even have? TMP <laughs> ammo. Like, do you, do you have a shotgun? Yeah, I do. Why is not in the case? I had it at one point, but you threw it away. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I'm having my only time. excuse. My only excuse that I stay about is. Resident Evil always had shitty inventory. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. The funniest shit. I don't know how it is now, but back the, then. The funniest Ooh. shit ever watching Resident Evil Village streams and stuff. And, and one of the people, Carsey, realizing when he got to a point where he got the sniper rifle was like, fuck, I need a bigger attach case. All right, guys, uh, bear with me as I go all the way back to the vendor and get this attach case. And I was like, Carson, you should have fucking known as soon as the vendor says, hey, I got this big attach case. Yeah, you might want to buy that. that. You say that, here's me. Here's me looking at chat. Uh-huh. Fuck you. Tell Capcom to start the <laughs> design. <laughs> How is, hey, it, had, that it, how is it? How is it? Twenty twenty, and they have not improved this thing since ninety seven. I, I, no I, I had a I had a moment yesterday doing that, like. But but anyways, I like also too during that whole chase and stuff. The whole chase is like Seagal did all. It was literally the Thanos all that for a drop of blood because because all did all that sticking and moving the garage just to get fucking cornered at the bottom of the garage. I was like, so <laughs> what was all that for again? I like how because that's how all of them are. Seagal gets a drop on them, washes them, and then somehow, all right, that's it. Oh yeah, shout out to Charles and Nelson getting capped in the leg, and he just disappears afterwards. Like, so he was done, right? Yeah, he was done. Yeah, I I was like, like, I, the movie said I he did, was done. Like, now here's the here's the thing. He took that, shot and, said, he took that shot and said, "Well, that's the end of me." <laughs> I, I was already mad at Nelson because this nigga had the fucking gall to say, "I knew you'd be stationed over here doing recon on us." Okay, shoot him. Shoot him. It's like I shoot. Well, I like how I like how like, Rivera. I, like I swear to you, like, he says, "I swear to you, I did not bring him here." <laughs> Yo, I like how Rivera just looked at him like, "Oh, thanks for you, thank thanks for giving him to me, uh, Nelson." So uh, you gonna give him to me? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Get get in the car. Get get in the car. Yeah. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. No way. No um, way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. No way. <laughs> Like, tell me, where did he go? He ran up those stairs. <laughs> oh, now we have to get to Rivera here. Now, early in the movie, um, by the way, the priest apparently that he gave the true serum to, I guess he's still alive after that shootout because he up? disappears. Who, CJ, who the hell cares? We got like 10 minutes left in this movie. Hey, hey, exactly. I'm not even going to waste a I'm sound just, clip on I'm, that I'm, one. I'm just saying, did you love how he was really describing the true sounds? Like, yeah, feel the hotness. It gets warm. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, oh, I'm, over here like, I'm over here like, what's wrong? Don't you want to be inside me? <laughs> <laughs> he was one step away from saying that shit. <laughs> Don't you love it? Sherman Hemsley, PCP. PCP. As you literally. New world order. I mean, it was almost there when he said it. Like, but I, I, was, know, but I love I the truth serum he says. work because, because for me, it's like, it's like, can't a person just not talk? No, this is how it works. It just makes Seagal angrier, and then he goes Super Saiyan. But it works we've like got- it works like the, it works like the last little truth, dog. It works the exact same way. Dude, same we forgot the, I got. We admit. forgot the one thing. Hold on, we forgot the one thing before the before, when before the, the big shot in the apartment when uh Seagal's old man partner was like, "What are you gonna do?" And he pulls out that uh, bag full of guns. He's like, "I'm about to take it above the law." You see. I am now marked for death from the mafia, and I'm out for justice. They touch my deadly ground, and I, and they will feel the fire down below. Even if I'm half past dead, 
I'm a mercenary for justice. You want to hold my machete? <laughs> you want to hold my machete? You want to hold like, my machete? Like, no, 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 like, awesome. wait, wait, wait. You want to hold my machete because it's about to go under siege. <laughs> you, look, you, look at, you look at the camera. China salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Now look at it. It's like look at it, D. It's glimmering, man. <laughs> yes, I forgot. I know, that was what they was forgetting. Side note. No, I will go in the shadows, go, man. Side note. How do you go into this Hindi man's Seven Eleven corner store? <laughs> and he's and I'm this man this is literally all my energy, yo. He had all my energy, man. Confused in <laughs> in <the Hindi. laughs> His face is like. I just put up that Lay stand. Yo, the Lay's truck guy just drove off. <laughs> my man, look, my man, yo, this, yo, DJ Sue, DJ Sue. I want people to understand something. My man didn't look like B-roll footage because my man was confused in Hindi the whole time. Like, yo, when my man went head first through those Gatorade bottles. Oh, come on, bro, bro. Don't. I'm not shoving you in it. I just bought that. That was nah, a loan. The and then Seagal, you heard this lie. He told me to come to America. America. And, and then Seagal. Seagal. Seagal, a, did, it, Seagal God, seismic that. tossed the nigga into the window and no sold the landing too. Man, I, did, Fox, I survived. Fox. Rebels from Syria killing my children. <laughs> just for these crackers to come up in here. Listen. He did, yo. Listen, the listen, up part. listen, oh. listen, listen, Fox. They don't have no idea. This is why I can't have this be a boy's head establishment because y'all want to bring all this. Yeah, wait, 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 a wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Fox. Listen, sir. I, I, like, as a, like, as a member of Foxhound, I got to give you the big boss <laughs> salute for using, for, like, for using my line, seismic toss. <laughs> Yo, because here's my thing. So he I looked, appreciate yo, that yo, so much. He looked at Hindi dude in his face and eyes and was like, I'm going to jump through that window. <laughs> I'm pretty sure your insurance got this, so I'm going to do this shit. I'm going to use this, like, I'm going to use this higher goon number 435 as a shield. And I stand by what I said. That higher goon looks suspiciously, suspiciously like the same Asian nigga that caught hands in the very beginning of the movie with the Aikido. It looked like that was the very same guy. I mean, D, are you, D, are you trying to tell me that they recycled the same stunt man? Well, I mean, look, it's, Eris, it's look, Eris, come on. Look, Eris, look, look, really? You know what? That's, that's not bad on me. <laughs> Seagal would never cut a corner. <laughs> Yeah, he would never do that. I mean, come on, this is the same man. This is the same man. Like, D, this is the same man who had nothing positive to say about Van Damme. Let me tell you something, Eris. Let me tell you something. And this man's long, long, long career. Has he ever gotten lazy and did something like, I don't know, guys, have guys. somebody else do his voiceover work? He never guys, do that. Guys, guys. No here's, 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 just, here's how just I do think, Just to think, just to think about that, D. No, Seagal's always been perfect in everything he's, uh, but see, he's see, ever done. But see, he's not perfect because here's how I know this movie is cheap. They couldn't even get this guy to be one of the henchmen because he's a staple of 80s. This guy. You mean yeah. tell me? Oh, you couldn't get Al Leong. Man. You couldn't get Al Leong. You couldn't get Al look, Leong in here? Like, come on, man. First off, I got to say this one thing. So, 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 where, so, where that, so where will that come from, bro? <laughs> Where that come from, bro? Yeah, man. Look, I'm just saying the head on up. Yeah, you jaw like ugly, but look all that and neat, though, bro. Hey, hey, that's, cut, a, hey, man, hey, 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 that's how he got you the ladies, like man. He got all the ladies in the '80s, man. That's how and he, he got, got the good nipples too, because they ain't too big and the areola. <laughs> oh my! So hold up, we're just saying we're towards the end of the problems. movie. No, I've mean, not seen it, Super Cena mode it, yet. It is, it is literally the most anticlimactic shit ever because, first off, he is literally biding his time torturing Steven Seagal. Only thing missing is him taking pliers and bending his tail but his, his his fingernails back get, or some shit. Real quick, real quick. Before we get into that, I noticed something that came up. He was like, so that's what we're doing in this country. We're just going to murder senators. What type of man are you? I'm like this. Wait, wait, wait. That's America, so, we're suppo- so wait a minute. We're protecting the lawmakers now, but I thought early in the movie they were the ones that were making it hard for you to be. A... 
Never whatever, mind. whatever. We got Uchi five minutes. Uchi Uchi Wally Wally or one the Roman Empire, like, like, oh, uh, like the Romans used to kill their sinners. Are we the Romans? And I'm like, I mean, uh, we do. I mean, I mean, the our white man founded, still runs the country, so I mean, our country is founded on shit. a democratic republic. Last I checked, just being really, really honest, much like the Romans, much like the Romans, the country is built upon its minorities, mostly Africans and mostly Africans and people of not of that country help build the, build that country around you while the rich just sat on their asses and just, you know, you just say it's okay to molest little kids and all that crap like that. So, yeah, it's sort of like that. It's sort of the same way like America, but the only difference is we say Yankee Duel. <laughs> like, actually, that was the British trying to like talk crap about us. <laughs> oh, was was? A- oh, 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 wow. I gotta be honest with you. That was a, if that's a real fact, you got me on that one. <laughs> I'm just, like, my thing is this though. It's so the whole thing is so anticlimactic because it's just him bot- Rivera biding his time, and I'm like Kill him now. What are we doing here, guy? Just kill I mean, him. I'm like, I'm like, like, so is there a countdown for somebody to be like on 60 minutes and it's like you're not going to be able to stop? It was like, what's going on? This whole plot is everywhere. Hey, can you- best- so let me get so I got a question. I got a question. Go ahead. The, 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 the one move that Rivera has shown us is that true serum beats everybody. So he puts it on, he he sticks. Um, action Trump and Action Trump is going out with some of the best facial action I have ever seen this nigga ever do in a movie. But not only does this motherfucker muscle up and breaks out of his binds, but the true serum has no effect. Actually, no, it did because after he snapped Silva's neck, he collapsed right after that (laughs) shit. I like how not, I like how he buzzes his nose, breaks his arm, and then snaps his whole back. And I'm thinking to myself, Steven Seagal just murdered, just folded a 65 year old man in half. <laughs> he just snapped a man who just got his AARP card in half. <laughs> the big this ain't this ain't. Where was all this shit for Michael Jai White in X and Wounds? Where was any of this on I mean, this is the best I could do, but uh, yeah. Breaks his arm. <laughs> God. <laughs> I just laughed because you see his arm come around it and just pop. I'm like, yeah. But I gotta say though, but Reckless ain't lying though. It was a it, oh, it, it, yes. it was a seed of moment, and I was like, yeah, Rivera just looks like a paper mache because yo, he took his time breaking his arm, by the way, because Rivera was like, it's that it's the, and here's the thing, it's the worst kind of arm break because the slow it's one thing that all of a sudden in one sweet swift move to get your arm break and clean like that, like in, in most even cigar movies, but when it slowly happens, it's like yo, that's the worst. Because you're literally oh, watching your oh. arm bend down, and it's like, oh, oh, no, ah. Oh. It's hilarious, man. It's one of the most funny things I've ever seen. He did this shit at the fucking place where the senator was at in the basement. So I'm like, so you're going to kill Seagal and then turn around and kill the senator? Like, All I right. again, I don't understand half the crap that was going on, even with the plot anyway. But just, 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 just the fact that it's like so. Is this happening like in the like like that's what got me? Was it happening in the basement? Yeah, it was, was it, like, the, it was the basement of the place and stuff. And him coming up there all bloody up and everything. Like, what's going on? Uh, and then the senator looking confused and stuff. And I'm like, so was the senator part of this? Oh, I guess he wasn't part of this. Uh, okay. And then all of a sudden, know. the movie all of a sudden turns into fucking like the end of fucking flight where Denzel is all of a sudden. Well, not the end of flight. The end of uh. On deadly ground. No, 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 on no, deadly no. ground. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, on actually, deadly ground. Yeah. No, no, no. The end of fucking clearing present danger where fucking Jack Ryan was in front of fucking Congress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's what it turned into. So he was like, all right, so tell your story, sir. I was part of the CIA. I was part of the CIA. We did the CIA it. got to face his crimes. <laughs> and so you're the whistle- So you're the whistleblower for the CIA? So wait, let me get this shit straight. All of this weird thing where it connected drugs in Chicago I actually went back to your old time in the CIA where the CIA used Here's drugs. A kicker. They funneled drugs into the inner cities. Here's a kicker. This didn't stop the drug war. 
No, no it, it actually didn't. exacerbated it, if anything. It made it a lot worse. And actually, like, like I don't know what you're talking about. Crack didn't leave D.C. until <laughs> 1997. So, yeah, the, the, crack the, the, is still here in, in, in California right now. So, like, just, yo, crack is like a secondary drug now. It's like, very recreational now, ain't it? Like, it's just, like, like, oh, isn't, it, then, isn't it like pending to be legal in like Oregon or something? And, oh, yes, it is. And we talked about that too. We talked about that crap too on an episode of our podcast. I mean, I mean, because it's it's to a yo. point now, it's to the point now where it's like, well, we'll let you do the crack, but we got these social programs to get you off of it. So much I mean, like, weed, and I hate to be that person. Much like weed, I agree with Rod, Roger on American Dad, sir. Sir, this is not cocaine. Not everyone does it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Apparently, apparently, when I I had to do some stuff where I had to do some basically because they found piss in my, my my they found not piss they found weed in my piss. It was like, no, you gotta take drug rehab or some shit, right? I did it, right? But while I was there, I saw a lot of people walking in. Yeah, man, that nose candy. What? <laughs> like, really? Is that easy? I'm like, nigga, I don't need for weed. What you doing? I was like, man, I like what you hear, man, dog. It was that Mr. It was it was that Mr. It was that Mr. Krabs scene meme was like, yeah, yeah, what's all like that? Our man Henry Silva actually did legit break Steven Seagal's nose in that final action sequence. Yes, good. He he did break his nose, and Seagal had to go to the hospital, but he came back to work the following day. But they kept that in the movie. Okay, so, so, yeah, so can we yeah, can we all agree yeah, yeah. that Silva's the MVP of this movie then? Yeah, yes, 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 absolutely. Yes. I mean, I like yes. how he just I mean, even if you look at the beginning, you're right. As soon as he looked at Seagal and was like, yo, sit your ass down. We out here doing CIA shit. All right, fuck off. All right. <laughs> Where's the moral co- code coming Now up? you got your moral code. Dude, you just got done mowing down a bunch of Cambodians. The second I say, why you fucking with my poppy field? Nah, man. This is wrong. Like, nigga, you part of genocide. Yeah, what are we talking I don't about? Understand. It's, like, it's like you decide to whistleblow now, not way back when, when you quit the CIA. You wait like 12 years to blow the whistle. Got a wife and kids. Think about it. The opportunity wasn't there. Okay. Okay. The opportunity was not there. I mean, in this in this bizarre world, he could have put a stop to the uh, drug war immediately, but you know. No, look, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. We already said drug war. <laughs> It ain't stop nothing. Drug war. The drug war is literally a mat truck going down, going downhill with no brakes. Come on, man. They oh, I, would stop say, that shit. I would oh. just say this real quick. Uh, here's my thing about this movie. If we're gonna go into it, it's probably the only most grounded Seagal movie that he has done. Because everything movie, else just it's his yeah. first movie, so it better be grounded. <laughs> yeah, it was very grounded. I mean Mark for Death kinda sort of was except the voodoo shit. And then then just just up the ante over and over and over again until I, yeah. his, his weight got bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> I mean look 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 if we look at opening weekend this is the most weirdest opening weekend but it's indicative of the 80s you know um Number one movie, which isn't shocking, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. All right, cool. Yeah, Beetlejuice, cool. Uh, Fox and the Hound re-release, because, of course, Disney re-released that fucking movie. Yes, movie. yes. I'm about to show my age. I saw both of those movies in the movie theater. I was uh, five years old. Good Morning, Vietnam. That movie was great. Yeah. I have not seen it still, unfortunately. 88? That was in 88? Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow, okay. I thought that came out, like, you know, a little bit older than that. Lord. Okay, um, I'm just, just going to say it right here, right now. Uh, I don't know when we're going to do this, but we definitely have to do a uh, Robin Williams, Williams month, month. On, on, on Scrub Club Gaming. And uh, Good Morning Vietnam has to be one of those movies because I mean, it's Steve criminal Martin. that you haven't seen it yet. You know what, Chris? And you know, while we with that pause real quick on, on Three Bud Geeks, we've been circling the wagon about Miss Doubtfire for a while, nigga. I think it's oh, oh, oh. It I'm, I'm your guy for, I'm I'm for this one. I'm your guy for this one. Like, 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 I'm gonna make all of them Matilda and Super <laughs> and my Cyber Squad jokes, and, <laughs> and no one's ever gonna stop me. But also, uh, again, to show how 80s this movie is, uh, Moonstruck with Cher. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, it's oh. like holy shit. And then I'm like, in love with you. Yeah, so I, proud of it. and then uh, another movie that I actually did see, uh, Biloxi Blues. 
Biloxi Blues is one of the, and I say this as a person, I say this from both a critic point, point and my personal point. Biloxi Blues is an incredibly great, really great movie. Overhyped as fuck. Overhyped as fuck. If you're a white, if you are a mid ass white military guy, you love that movie. <laughs> you did which is ironic, that. which is ironic because P- I would figure it'd be stripes, but Biloxi Blues, dude, really? I what, what at least what I noticed the the, the like I said the mid ass corny ass military white guys that's their jam Biloxi Blues and um Saving Pride Ryan Biloxi Blues and Saving Pride Ryan those are the two ones that I noticed with the like, Saving Pride Ryan I get white guys you know what I mean like, Saving Pride Ryan I get because I mean I think people forget that movie gets dour at the end it's like man people die Fuck. I think niggas our age I think niggas our age though their their jam was both if not three kings it was definitely uh 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 what's it called the black hawk jump the black hawk uh, black hawk down black hawk yeah, down yeah low key yeah, that's, low that's key weird, low key for me I have to go back to my childhood a soldier story really I really? watched that, I watched that a lot man I want soldier I mean, story is the reason why I don't like black men in the military it's old boy right the day the Geechee is over. <laughs> oh man, that's great, man. Incredible I think for me, acting. for one me, of, one of the, it's, it's a great social story. Is a great oh, movie. Great. It's the reason why I hate old black military. <sighs> that's the reason for, why. But for me, enemy at the gate with uh Jude Law. That, that oh, was everybody loves enemy at the gates, man. That was a, enemy at the gates was pretty good actually. Yeah, really yeah, good. Man. But right. like, it, but it's just like that. I mean, it's just like the eighties and just. Again, this is a and this is a green Steven Seagal, by the way, which is why I feel he he felt that he had to emote at mm-hmm. times and stuff because it, it was from- one of those movies you had to he had to because you he didn't know like a lot of those guys we seen them was speak man do the call for all of them they get one shot that's all you get it's just one shot to Seagal's credit he lucked out I think he just lucked out out of, out of all those people at that time he lucked out because I think Speakman had way more charisma than him but guess what. We got some gold, so dude, they're gonna do it. Uh, apparently, he announced they're doing an above the law, too. Okay. Get the fuck out of here. Wait, get the fuck out of here. Why? So why? I can see him sit the entire time. So, you know number what one, he, so, number you know one, what I gotta ask Steven, though. I have to ask Steven. So, Steven, you gonna get Sharon Stone back? Steven, that like, why? So he can just minor tai chi in his room. Are we gonna see an older, <laughs> we're gonna see older big titty hey, you know, right now? Hello. That little thing he loves doing this. He see, loves doing that. But see, season Pam Greer, because you know I love me some season Pam Greer. She's pretty. No, no, no. Pam Greer can't be in it. Her character had to die off like, like, <laughs> like, like two years. Like two years ago, we went to the film. <laughs> hey, hey! Shout out to Pam Greer, stunt woman that took that shotgun shot and just like the slow motion fall back when she took the shotgun shot. I was like, oh, that was actually not bad. That was pretty good. Or it could have been a black dude in a wig. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I mean, I watch. I, I'm going to get you sucker, so I already know the joke on that one. So you know what it is. What it is. Um, but yeah, this is this was this was this was a fun movie. Like I said, I, I like these quick and dirty movies. They just get straight to the point. Done. It doesn't overstay its welcome and stuff. Because heaven forbid, if this shit was like two hours. I'll be like, really, Steve? We're, we're going two hours on this? Like, <laughs> so, um, but anyways, yeah, props, um, props to stunt actors and like rest in peace, Leslie Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you like I'm just dad. I was like, "Yo, Steve, so you just gonna just hit us up with the blood the law too?" I was like, "Why? Why are we doing this?" Stuff? You know, here's the thing. Like I said, Steve is yet to give you my movie. I I wanted the Emperor so badly. Who I wanted it. I wish I never knew that information. I mean, it's supposed to get Genghis Khan, Steven Seagal. I will never let that go. I mean, you it's were like supposed that. to get Genghis Khan, Steven Seagal. I mean, it's like uh, what was the name of that fucking um, movie with the firemen? Um, what? Fire down below. Yeah, backdraft. They did a oh. sequel to backdraft, and they brought back one of the Baldwin brothers' characters in the sequel. But he's only a minor I think character. Billy, I think it was Billy that yeah, was in Billy, it. Billy came Billy back. Yeah, Billy came back for the sequel. I'm like, oh, that's actually interesting. They're continuing it. And I'm like, he's just a cameo. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Really, that's, 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 that's like doing it. That's like doing a, a sequel to Fled, and you just got a cameo of all uh, Lord Fishburne just randomly show. Dude, it was like, dude, it was the equivalent of fucking Drumline Two, and I was like, why the fuck is Nick Cannon here? There's a Drumline Two. 
And yes, I have there is. It, and I won't watch it. Yeah, yeah. They they had an old girl that plays Storm as Lee character, so you already know where that's going. The so, younger Storm, not Halle Berry. Right? Yeah, not Halle Berry Storm, but you know the other light skinned Storm. You know, Jen, you know hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is this is my this is my obligatory mo- moment to tell y'all, Jen. If you're listening to this podcast, which I'm pretty sure you are, girl, I still want my twenty dollars back for X Men: uh, Dark Phoenix. I haven't forgiven you. It's been three years. Where is my money? You didn't have to. You didn't have to and while we're at it, while we're, at, while, we're at, while we're asking for our money back, uh, Corey Feldman, can we get our twenty back? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? What? <laughs> what Feldman? What did you do? He's a Corey. What did you do? <laughs> He's so Corey. Boy. Okay, to make a long story short, Corey Feldman was a, released a documentary last year. Right before lockdown, literally the Monday before the lockdown, and the entire thing did not. We gave twenty dollars for nothing. Oh, y'all paid for that? Wow. Yes. Wow. Was that thing? So was that you thing paid for that... a documentary for you paid for the documentary equivalent of Firefest, and it wasn't. And it wasn't even like I thought because you know what it was. I know what you're talking about because I thought because I, I assumed it was a documentary about him showing all like the Hollywood pedophiles, and I was like, yeah, about to blow the whistle on this shit. Yeah. And then I found, and then I found out. That wasn't a documentary at all. I'm like, what the fuck is a documentary? So what did he then? do? So what was it about then? I don't know. The That's point is, we, 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 we got fire. We got fire. We got fire fest. We got fire fested. Let's just keep it 100. We got oh, wow. fire fested. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Damn! Yeah. And, and the worst part is, the worst part about this is that me, Cabado, and some of my home, uh, some of our homies who work behind the scenes and stuff, we had ordered Chinese food. We was we had wow. soju. We was ready to watch this. Just right. we're either gonna laugh yeah. or cry. we either way. We was ready to no, eat. No. Hey Fox, he was like this. I told you that nigga was touching little girls. So 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 for then we ended up spending like half an hour singing Rick Astley songs. And yeah. Then, and then and then we just uh, called an L and just watched uh, Death of Superman Lives. <laughs> hey uh, hey Chris, yeah. real, real quick, sir. So, <laughs> God, just thinking about that, damn, that that really is a fire fest situation. It really. First is. of all, if if Corey Feldman was to put out that tell all about all the pedophiles in Hollywood, he wouldn't even need to. He really wouldn't even need to make a documentary out of it at all. All he would need to do is take a scene out of uh, out of a movie that we just talked about, The Legend of Chen Zin. I mean, Legend of the Fist, right? Put out a kill list. This is a kill list. Just this do a kill, kill list. list. Because there's a girl, there's a lesbian with blue hair named Vicky that is ready to kill people. So just I mean, give them the name. No, no, seriously. Or, 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 you know, a little uh, Scottish girl, you know, who goes uh, Cersei Lannister, Joffrey Lannister, <laughs> <laughs> Gregor Clegane. Hey, hey, look, man, look. It's one thing. Here's, here's how I do the shenanigans. When people were going against MJ, I was like, guys, all right, you don't have to believe Macaulay Culkin. That's fine. You might want to listen to Corey Feldman because no crazy white boy, no crazy white boy is just going to come out and say some shit and have nothing to lose to say some shit. I'm just saying. Somebody said, and somebody said this, and I had to be disgusted. No, that's what makes it. That's what makes it even funnier. Oh, sorry, D. That's what really makes it funny is when Corey Feldman says, "No, MJ didn't do shit." Right. And you still don't believe him, but you believe him if he said, but you believe him when he says, "Oh, these other motherfuckers, though." I know, right? <laughs> now here's the thing that get me. That like, see that with Corey, it's like somebody like, man, wow, no, who won him unless Corey Feldman? You wasn't around the eighties with Corey Feldman. That was a dreamy fourteen year old that I'm pretty sure Harvey Weinstein was like. Nah, I don't like bitches. <laughs> and Corey Hayne. And don't forget Corey Hayne. I mean, look. Corey Hayne, too. Look, look, and I hate to be that person. Technically, the reason why he's not here, he kind of went that way, was because he was molested. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look. I, look, I want to hey, look, look. I watched that, that Hulu documentary with Tiffany. You know, I mean, oh, oh, oh Punky Brewster. Talking about growing up in Hollywood. Yep. I, believe, I believe it. She hung around Corey. She hung around Corey Haim. She hung around a lot of those fucking what them dudes. Like she knows. Man. So and here's the thing. Here's the sick part. Like one of my favorite people. I always forget her name. I always butcher her name when I say it. Um, homegirl for I Carly. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Cosgrove? Yep. Yeah. When she came out, I was like, yeah, all of the niggas at Nickelodeon disgusting. 
Oh yeah, the dude, the, 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 the dude, the dude that was a uh, part of all that, and I was like, oh, that ain't shocking. That ain't shocking at yeah, all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But all the like all the tales you and here's and, and, and the sad part is this because it actually goes both ways. Number one, he's been investigated, nothing has been found. So a part of me thinks like there probably really isn't nothing to it. He's just creepy as hell. But then again, I think about Hollywood because if you've been in the media any amount of time, you would know how fucked up it gets so mm-hmm. when you hear all of that stuff it's like oh yeah and they're not telling you everything either <laughs> that's that's how it always goes man when it comes to when a truth get out there it's always everybody always goes and eh, they don't happen that always happen because just be honest we all we all selfish people look i understand that but i really want this next season of whatever show i like to come out so you need to shut up for a second because it's got to sit down with finishes I will say we can deal with that producer. But I will say this though, uh, the director Andrew Davis, I gotta give him credit. He has a lot of great movies under his under his belt, man. Mm-hmm. The Fugitive Dog, you did the Fugitive, Pfft, man. This was a, this wasn't a lazy director, and you can kind of tell that he got a lot out of Seagal. Dude, so yeah, Roger so yeah, Ebert this is not a lazy dude, dude, man. Roger Ebert said it best, and this is very just perfect. Roger Ebert said this movie has so much plot more than what it needs. Yeah. He's not <laughs> and I was like, he ain't lying on that one. I was like, this movie was more overambitious than what it needed to be. <laughs> again, I you know, checked out after the first hour until they had brought up the actual plot again. Like the CIA you know, thing is what he was probably talking about too, because I was like, all right, I guess it's I'm sure. And like, I, I went like probably about 30, 40 minutes into the movie and I cut it off last night. I was thinking to myself, I'm high as shit. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> so I, 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 hung, I, I turned it off. I watched it again this morning. Wait, what? Click, 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 click. What? Wait a minute. How, why are we over here now? Wow. This is so much plot. There's so much plot for no damn reason, bro. I mean, I'm just saying, like, he did Chain Reaction, The Fugitive, um, was it Code of Silence, The Perfect Murder, Collateral Damage? Wow, he did do that. Uh, yep. Hole, holes, The Guardian. Like this, this guy. Yeah, he's, 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 he's. Like I said, every movie that he's done, there's a level of like, yo, he has an idea and he directs the shit out of it. And it ain't lazy, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, gotta give him credit for that, you know. So, um, but anyways, uh, yep. Fox, you want to tell everybody where they can find you guys' this material? Like- yes. So, guys, as I said, we do our own video game podcast every weekend. The Scroll Game Podcast. You want to find us? You find us on pretty much every any podcasting uh, site: SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker Audio, and Stitcher Radio. The Scroll Game Podcast. You can also find us on our Instagram at the Scroll Game Podcast, where we post highlights of the Scroll Game Podcast. And we're gonna be posting Aloe Flexing's motherfucking PS5 on there soon. And, and this bitch, if, bitch, if you do it, okay, make sure. Uh, <laughs> yo, man, man, I'm gonna that gonna motherfucker. yo, so DM me to do this shit again. It's like, yo, I'm not gonna unplug this PS5 just to do this shit again. Don't you fucking dare. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, you can find us on our Twitter at Star Gaming. And if you want to follow all of us individually, you can follow me on Twitter, or Instagram, the Rex underscore Fox, YouTube Rex underscore Fox, where I will be bringing back the Karen War show. And you guys are gonna love that. And you can find me on, on Twitch.tv slash reckless fox. Kabada, where can they find you, dude? Uh you can find me on uh a Twitch at twitch.tv slash spoken So you can find me on Instagram at Chrono underscore just underscore cosplay. And by the way, uh for all you common writer fans, the two of us have a review of uh the latest episode of Common Rider Saber tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific Center Time. Yay. And Outlaw, where can they find you, dog? Y'all can find me on twitch.tv slash allocateindicate. And you can find me on Instagram at underscore allocateindicate underscore. Sweet. Great. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that awesome. what's, next, what's, what's next on our journey at the beginning of this summer? Uh, oh, my gosh, yes. We, it, it, I guess it would be the beginning of summer. And we're going to start off right with Gojira. We're starting off with Gojira. I mean, the classic Gojira. The classic builder from the 1950s. Uh, um, that we'll Perry talk- Mason shit. <laughs> we'll be we talking. Nah, no, 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 sir, sir. We will talk about Mr. Mason because he did a great job for. Because if it wasn't for Mr. Raymond Burr, white folk would have not looked at Dave now. What is this Japanese stuff? I think you know what. What is me all Prime, this? Me and Prime did kind of mention that a little bit when we were talking about uh, uh, 
uh, Ultra Ultra Q and stuff and stuff because they were they did reuse the Godzilla costume for one of the monsters in Ultra Q and I was like, you know what? Yeah, white people probably weren't watching our show. Oh, like, like Malagor from Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Ultra Q was it came out during that same period of time that like uh, that God Gojira came out and stuff and it was like yeah, white people probably were not going to watch Ultra Q nah, at all. Nah, it's it's just one of those weird things how it all caught on, but Gojira was one of the really major major things to really come over from Japan to America, especially post um, World War II. It was a really huge thing because at that time, Kawajiri movies were coming into the, into the, um, America. The problem about that was a lot of people weren't going to look at, like I said again, Japanese films. All the big time, all the big like directors and all the rest of that were highly influenced by Akira's uh, Kawajiri stuff. So, and it, not just him, but all the stuff that Toho put out and brought, they came over to America with all those monster movies. It was just a different way of, of American audiences seeing something that they didn't make. And it was just a, a, a brand new thing. Sort of like how all of us reacted the first time we saw anime, where it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, did you know? You can make your titties bigger? Wait a minute. <laughs> D, did you know that, uh, from my understanding, Godzilla was actually retitled? Uh, Gigantus, the fire breathing. Yeah. Monster. Yep. Just to sell in America. Just to sell in America. So, yeah, you, you're going to have to have a bridge. So, yeah, this is for purists to say, no, not the one with Raymond, but for, sure, sure. But real talk, if it wasn't for Raymond, there was no bridge to an American audience at the time. Audience meaning white people. So also, the movie, also, the movie does look pretty uh, crisp in Blu ray. Doesn't uh, it, Matt? Doesn't it? it? Tells it is actually amazing. It looks amazingly well this for, is why, for a movie of that age to me. This is exactly why I told everybody about Ultra Q. I was like, Ultra Q on Blu ray? That should look fucking great. One more thing on Blu ray. This is what happened on, to you. on that same level. On that same um, level, look at any character movie in Blu ray. It looks the same way. Just so this this is what happens when you hold on to the film's original negative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That shit looks great and excellent. Yes, it does. But anyways, that is it. And uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us on Twitch and YouTube and some people yep, on yep, Facebook yep. and stuff. So uh, we will catch you guys later. Peace. Thanks, guys. Peace. See ya.